On a cold winter day, I remembered my old polyhedrons from when I was at school. Made from paper, very fragile. So let's make some from solid wood. A set of all five platonic solids would be nice. We start with the tetrahedron. It has four faces that are equilateral triangles. Because we will work by tilting the saw blade, the correct angles are important. Here we have 70.5 degrees between the faces of the tetrahedron. So the blade of the mitre saw is tilted by 90 degrees minus 70.5 degrees and three cuts are made. These cuts are rotated by 60 degrees from each other. The tetrahedron is still inside this block and needs to be cut free on the table saw. Here it is. It came out relatively precise. The differences were about 2%. Now we will have to make a cube. Really difficult thing. But luckily it's possible to calculate the angle between the faces and the space diagonals. It's 35.3 degrees. Making a cube, of course, requires an equilateral triangle first. Nice shape, but where's the cube? Oh, it's trapped inside. Let's set it free. What did you say? Easier methods? Hmm, that is much more fun. The third solid is the octahedron. Two four-sided pyramids with their bases attached to each other. But when we want to cut it from solid wood, it's better to see it as four pairs of opposing parallel faces that are equilateral triangles rotated by 60 degrees. And then it's good to know that there is a 70.5 degrees angle reminds us of the tetrahedron, doesn't it? Starting with a triangle again, because it worked so well for the cube. <laughs> Oh, we are getting some free extra tetrahedrons here. And the octahedron is sitting in the middle. Its dimensions are already set, so I will have to cut it from the block with the exact thickness it needs to have. By the way, I could have done all this on the table saw, but the inner part of the workshop, where the mitre saw is, is at least a bit warmer. Here it is, a nice octahedron. You already knew that we are facing much more trouble with the next one, the dodecahedron. Important for us are of course the angle between the faces, which is 160.6 degrees and the distance between two opposite faces, which is 2.23 times the length of the edges. This time we make a big pentagon at first. The idea is to mount the block for the dodecahedron onto it. This block needs to have two marks that are exactly opposite to each other. They will be centered on the big pentagon. and. They are also the centers of the little pentagons on the block that are already two faces 
of the dodecahedron. The angles we need on the mitosaur are 180 degrees minus 144 degrees and 116.6 degrees minus 90 degrees. Again, the solid is nicely encased in fragmented wood. And it looks good. Making an icosahedron is not easy. It has 20 faces that are equilateral triangles. Using the technique from making the dodecahedron isn't possible because we would have to cut at many different angles and also to tilt the blade more than 45 degrees. But there's still hope. It's difficult to see, but if you take an octahedron and cut away everything that doesn't belong to the icosahedron that already hides inside it, you can make an icosahedron. Each face of the octahedron will be reduced to a smaller triangle that is rotated asymmetrically. The edges have to be divided according to the golden ratio. Eight faces from the octahedron plus 12 sockets should do the trick. When you look at this octahedron and imagine the icosahedron it will be, you can see that the angle between two faces of the octahedron is equal to the angle between one face and the second next face in the icosahedron. That's all we need to know to set the blade tilt. Here finally is the icosahedron. And here's the whole set of platonic solids together. <laughs>